Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the May 13th, 2019 Board of Education meeting, Group Unified School District. Roll call, please. Superintendent Garcia? Here. 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 Thank you. Mr. Ortega, will you please lead us in the flag salute? And before everyone sits down, would you please remain standing for a moment of silence? All right, at this moment, I would like to hold a moment of silence for Miss Christine Palafox, former employee who passed away on May 9th. Miss Palafox worked at Trotz Street Elementary School from 1989 to 2003 as an instructional aide and then as a bilingual language tutor healthcare aide. The board would like to express their condolences to the Palafox family. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, it's my opportunity tonight to hopefully inspire you with a short comment here. And it's a small quote from uh, Mr. Alan Turing. And it goes like this. Sometimes it is the people no one imagines anything who do the things no one can imagine. Thank you. Okay, on to a report from closed session, Mr. Brooks. Sir, during closed session by a vote of five to zero with all trustees voting in favor, the board voted, voted to appoint Gloria Daniels Valdez as coordinator of special education and as Daniels Valdez is here. Also tonight in closed session by a vote of five to zero with all trustees voting in favor, the board voted to appoint Olga Alvarez as coordinator of child welfare and attendance. Also tonight in closed session, by a vote of five to zero with all trustees voting in favor, the, the board voted to appoint Ray Marisnik as assistant principal at Patriot High School. And tonight in closed session by a vote of five to zero with all trustees voting in favor, uh, the board voted to appoint uh, as assistant principal at Patriot High School, Dr. Shannon Millen. And lastly, tonight in closed session by a vote of five to zero with all trustees voting in favor, the board voted to appoint as assistant principal at Rubido High School, Alicia Heimer. And Ms. Heimer, unfortunately, uh, had a family obligation, was unable to attend tonight, but wish she could be here. So we congratulate her. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Mr. Dubrowski. Thank you. By a 5-0 vote, the board approved a settlement in OAH case number 20190030134, resolving all issues in the dispute. Thank you very much. So that brings us to our uh, first item, item 1A, uh, the group middle school drumline performance. So um, led by Mr. Jay Hakamecki. So we're going to take a s short recess and out in the quad, they're set up to play out there. So. Uh, like you all to join us. All right, welcome back. That was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Had an opportunity to go to some band performances this year and last year, and it, you know, it just gets better and better throughout the district. So thank you to Mr. Hackamacki and all the, the band teachers out there. Keep up the great work. Okay, on to item 1B, 
2018-19 high school yearbook representatives. Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you. Also fantastic is the fact that this is the night in which the board gets their yearbooks. So we're going to go in alphabetical order, starting with Harupa Valley High School, where we have Carrie Bolender, yearbook advisor, Maria Morales, yearbook team leader, Kyle Leroy, yearbook staff, and Marianne Tejada, yearbook staff. Come on up. Next, we have Patriot High School with Jeremiah Andrade, yearbook staff, and Gabriela Cervantes, yearbook staff. Come on up. Um, we just want to say thank you for, to the board members for allow, allowing us to make such a, a spectacular yearbook, and we couldn't do this without you guys, so we just want to say thank you so much, and it's a privilege working with such amazing students at Patriot High School. Thank you so much. Next, we have River, Rivercrest Preparatory with Olga Alferez, Principal, and Kara Chavez, Guidance Coordinator. And last but not least, we have Rubido High School with Brianne Robel, yearbook advisor, and Yesenia Bustos, yearbook editor. Hello. My name is Yesenia Bustos, and I was a, this year's editor-in-chief for Rubido High School. This year's theme was Diamond in the Rough to highlight our 60th edition. We want to say thank you to all the board members for the support and the donations. All right, a tremendous amount of work went into the production of these fine yearbooks. Let's give all of our yearbook staff and advisors a big round of applause. All right, thank you. Uh, on to item 1C, 2018-19 student board members. Mr. Deshaun. Okay. Yeah, let's do that first. Okay. You can go down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Welcome to your last meeting, ladies. This is sad, or maybe not. <laughs> um, you're off. T Jasmine's coming back. Hooray! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. So <clears throat> we will actually honor you when you're done with your reports. If you don't give your report, you won't be honored. <laughs> So let's start with um, Harupa Valley High School, um, Camille. All right, good afternoon. The Jags are really excited for the end of the year events that are coming up. Uh, however, it is first priority to get the important work um, out of the way. Um, this past week and up to the end of this week, AP testing will take place. We encourage our Jags to do their very best and aim for a three or higher. On the sports spectrum, uh, we would like to congratulate our boys tennis for making it to the CIF prelims. Uh, congratulations to our varsity boys tennis for playing the River Valley League CIF and ending up as champs. Uh, congratulations to our varsity swim team for competing in the 2019 CIF finals. And congratulations to our JAG Athletes of the Year, both swimmers, Rebecca Brambilla and Leo Pena. In honor of a Teacher Appreciation Week, our ASB wrote positive tweets on paper and posted them on teachers' classrooms. This past Friday, we had our college and career signing day in the gym where seniors had the opportunity to officially announce and sign off to their future university, college, or uh, military career. Seniors also received their graduation cords that day. 
Seniors, class of 2019, have officially nine days until graduation. A lot of exciting events coming up for them. Senior awards nights will be tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. and the JVHS gym, where seniors will be awarded with their specific academic award or scholarship. Seniors will also have finals, which will be held May 17th and May 20th in between of grad night, which is, Disney, which is at Disneyland on Saturday, May 18th. The official last day the seniors, uh, for seniors will be May 20th, where seniors will also enjoy the afternoon at Senior Sunset at the stadium. Haruba Valley High School's Class of 2019 graduation ceremony will be May 23rd, 2019 at the JVHS Football Stadium, commencing at 6 p.m. We congratulate our, future, our graduating class and wish them the very best in their future endeavors. We would like to... Oh, sorry. I would like to also say that I am honored to have served as a board, student board member for the, my school this school year. I would like to thank Ms. Dodd and Ms. Miner for encouraging me to take this opportunity, and I'd like to thank the board members for listening to our school reports. This concludes today's report for JVHS. Thank you. Thank you, Camille. Today, would you like to tell us about Patriot High School? As the 2018, 2018 through 2019 school year comes to an end, Patriot has many exciting events coming up, especially for our senior class. But first, we would like to, co we would like to congratulate all the sport spring sports on their successful season. Virtually all sports made it into the CIF playoffs. Our students are currently taking their AP exams and we wish them luck. On Wednesday, May 15th, we will have our college parade where the seniors will walk across the quad holding, a, holding the sign of the school that they will be attending in the fall. This Thursday on May 16th, we will be holding our Senior Awards Night at 6 p.m. in the gym to honor a select 130 seniors for their achievements throughout the, throughout the years <coughs> in high school. The following day on Friday, the seniors will be having their annual Senior Sunset, which will be held on the field at 5.30 p.m. At the sunset, there will be games, activities, and an in-and-out truck. The seniors and the Senior Finals will take place next week on May 21st and 22nd. The following day is our senior checkout day. On Friday, May 24th, we will have the senior breakfast at 8.30 in the cafeteria, followed by our first graduation practice. On Tuesday, May 28th, we will have our last graduation practice, and later that afternoon, we will have our class of 2019 graduation at Rubido High School. The gates will open at 5 p.m. for the friends and family to be seated. On Friday, May 31st, the class of 2019 will have the Universal Studios grad bash, which will continue into the following day. And Patriot has, Patriot has had an, an amazing and successful school year, and we're looking forward to implementing our new ideas into the 2019 to 2020 school year. That concludes the report for today, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be the student board member representative for Patriot High School. Thank you, Jedi. And so, Jasmine, you know what you really need to do is leave us with an unanswered question that you'll come back and answer in the fall. So oh, okay. <laughs> okay. If you could tell us about Rubido, thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, fellow board members. April and May have been very busy months for Rubido High School. Last Wednesday for our yearly Rubido High School Inspire Week, where we build and try to create a bond with staff and students, we invited Mike Smith, an inspirational guest speaker, to come to the school to motivate our students. This Friday was a senior banquet, as well as the last spring dance for the seniors. Last Tuesday, the Rubido High School girls softball had a game and qualified for CAF round two. Rubido High School swim team won second place in league finals. Coming up this month, there will be a choir, con choir concert on Wednesday, May 15th at Rupa Valley High School starting at 7 p.m. Senior awards night is on Thursday, May 16th at 6 p.m. After a lot of work, the class of 2019 has organized the staff versus senior softball game for Friday, May 17th at 3 p.m. Our bands put so much time into what they do and we hope to support them Monday, May 20th at 7 p.m. at their band concert. This Tuesday, May 14th, our National Honor Society is having their banquet at 2.30 p.m. in the library, as well as our ASB class will have their banquet in the cafeteria at 6 p.m. to recognize the students who decorated, de dedicated their time to be in our school. This year is coming to an end, and sadly, senior graduation is there's this Thursday, May 30th at 6 p.m. For those students catching up or simply getting ahead, summer school starts Monday, June 3rd. Kevin Ramos finished third in CIF finals for the 3,200 meter run, and will advance to the Masters meet on Saturday, May 18th. Kevin is an e excellent scholar athlete, and he has the opportunity to go on state. Lastly, college college signing day is next week. That's all I have for to for you today. Thank you for the opportunity this year, and see you again next week. So, <laughs> thank you, ladies. We are.
proud and privileged to have you as student board members. You have all participated fully in board meetings, adding so much to the meetings. Um, the board would like to recognize you, so I believe the board will step down and congratulate you personally, and I believe Mr. Garcia has a few words to say. This is my show. Okay, um, I'd like to really thank all three of you for, uh, for doing such a great job, and we understand it's a big commitment, and we, we thank you for that commitment and dedication to be here, and also to bring the reports. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not like you just show up. Uh, you really do provide us valuable information, and so we have some plaques that we'd like to present to you. If you would come up when I call your name. Uh, Camille Edmosillo. I just want to read this real quick. In appreciation of your commitment and dedication to the Hoop Unified School District for the 2018-2019 school year. Congratulations. Where are you going to school, Camille? I'm going to, I'm attending Clara McKenna College in the fall and majoring in government. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Congratulations. So next I have um, Jasmine Leva. Congratulations. Congratulations. Last but not least, uh, Jedi Hernandez. Come on up. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on, uh, item number two, recognition. The first one, 2A, recognize Hoop Middle School band drum line. Mr. Jabrowski. Thank you, I don't see Mr. Hakamaki. Is he off taking away equipment? Okay, so administration would like to recognize Harupa Middle School's band Drumline, who qualified to participate in the American Drumline Association Championships on April 27th at Azusa Pacific University. They completed, competed in the junior advanced level, which is the highest level middle schools can com participate in, and as he artfully let us know, they won, um, and did an amazing job representing their school and the district, and having listened to him, we all agree. Congratulations to Mr. Hakamaki and the JMS Drumline for this tremendous accomplishment. To be recognized veterans of foreign wars essay contest winners, Mr. Dubrowski. Thank you. Are VFW contest winners here? If you are, can you come up front so we can say nice things about you? <laughs> That's good. 
All right. Each year, the Veterans of Foreign Wars Premier Scholarship Program sponsors an essay contest. Nearly 40,000 students compete for more than $2 million in scholarships and incentives. Students compete by writing and recording an audio essay on an annual patriotic theme. At the Harupa Valley VFW Post, there was an awards luncheon for our JUSD students who placed in the VFW-sponsored essay contest. Congratulations to the following winder, winners. The middle school contest is called the Patriot's Pen. The winners are Nat Natalie Lopez from Miraloma. J.C. Pope from Miraloma. <laughs> Joanna Pacheco from Mission Middle. <laughs> and Carla Perez from Mission Middle. Yeah, turn around, I want more pictures. <laughs> Your parents want to take pictures. So congratulations to our four winners. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Congratulations. I, was, I had the opportunity to be there with uh, some of our fellow board members and Mrs. Ford. And we got to hear these young ladies on their speeches. And they did a fantastic job. So congratulations again. OK, number 2C. Recognized Bilingual Educators Succeeding Together Award winners, Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you. On April 5th, the Riverside County Office of Education and CABE recognized this year's Bilingual Educators Succeeding Together Award recipients. The goal of this program is to recognize outstanding educators who are working hard at closing the achievement gap. The board and administration would like to congratulate the best award winners, and as I call your name, if you can please stand, Administrator of the Year, Monty Owens from Patriot High School. Teacher of the Year, Karen Martinez from Harupa Valley High School. <laughs> Support Personnel of the Year, Ana Lizarraga from Sunny Slope Elementary School. <laughs> Parent Community Volunteer, Maria Lara from West Riverside Elementary School. And Paraeducator of the Year, Nancy Luna from Harupa Middle School. <laughs> it's great hardworking employees and parents that make our students the successes that they are, so we want to congratulate all of you. All right, thank you. On 2D, recognize 2018-2019 school volunteers, Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you. The board and administration would like to publicly acknowledge our gratitude to the hundreds of volunteers who have assisted school personnel in the conduct of the educational program during the 2018-19 school year. Volunteers have assisted in countless ways, including in classrooms, offices, libraries, as field trip chaperones. A listing of volunteers by school site who volunteered 25 or more hours is included in your backup materials, and we would just like to congratulate all of our volunteers. All right, thank you. And 2E, recognize trustees Karen Bradford and Melissa Regal. Mr. Duchon. Thank you, President Garcia. Our board has made an unusual and strong commitment to making sure they are well educated in how to be good school board members. You may think it looks easy up here, but it's not. And in part of doing that, our whole board has committed to going into training which is called Masters in Governance, put on by California School Boards Association. It requires 45 hours of intensive training in all areas that may come before the board, including school finance, collective bargaining, community relations, poli policy and judicial review, human resources, school finance, and facilities. Um, I have been through all these classes several times and never graduated, so I'm working on it. But um, I always think it's good to attend as a governance team. I really applaud the board on their commitment to doing this. It's unique. I think very few boards have the entire board going through this training. Our board members all do. So thank you and special recognition tonight to Trustees Bradford and Ragel for your commitment and sitting through those long days and they make you work, don't they? Yeah. 
Thank you so much. Yes, uh, Mrs. Regal, Mrs. Bradford, congratulations on that. I know it's uh, it's quite a commitment. I know some of those are weekdays and weekends, so thank you for taking the time. On to number three, board member comments. Uh, let's start with you, Ms. Ortega. So yeah, I wanted to congratulate uh, Trustee Regal and uh, Karen for all the hard work. I know it, it even takes weekends, I think, for, for us to attend those. So um, we're a unanimous board again, um, and you know, just willing to grow and to also be teacher, I mean, uh, students of, of what we're doing too. So congratulations for that, of course. Um, and just real quick, I also wanted to say thank you and congratulations to our student board members. You, you, some of you get to take a, a break and come back, um, but some of you get to go off to the real world and, and uh, make us even more proud already. So I thank you for doing what you're doing and, and being a role model to also your uh, fellow uh, um, students there in, in your high schools. And we'll definitely look forward to those graduations that are coming up soon too. Um, and then also congratulations to all the best awards for um, for uh, CABE. We, we were there. Um, I serve as the vice president of CABE, and it, th th this award was extra special for me because I, you know, uh, we were up on stage and, and shaking you all of all of your hands, and and I was able to say, you know, what uh, I'm 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 proud of of this district and and these teachers who really and and uh, parents who give and go above and beyond to um, support students and community building and things like that. And um, this is the event too where the assembly women are the one that represents us in Sacramento, uh, Sabrina Cervantes. Um, she didn't just go for a little bit, she actually went up on stage too and she shook each and everyone's um, hand. So I think that, that shows a lot of our commitment as well um, in, in this educational field that, that we're in. So. Um, Congratulations again. Um, and then, yeah, we did uh, attend the BFW essays and uh, congratulations students. I think the option was out there for you guys to read your essays and we were just so proud that you stood up and you said, yeah, we'll take, we'll take up that challenge as well for you to get up and, and, and uh, you know, one thing is writing your essays, a whole different thing um, is, is reading it in front of, you know, the audience. So we congratulate you for that and, and we were rooting for you too. A um, few of the board members were there. So thank you for, for your courageous souls and, and reading those essays and writing them as well. Um, and then I think I'll save the rest for later. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ortega. Mrs. Bradford. Part of the fun of being a trustee is seeing the marvelous ways in which human beings serve the mission of our children. Part of what I saw this last week was the retirement of many fine educators, and I wished I'd had the opportunity to know more of them because hearing their career stories and the effect that they have on lives is very humbling and makes me very proud of our district. Um, I went to the awards banquet for FFA, and it was very impressive to me as each of the officers was called upon to explain the duties. And one, one that really impressed me was um, a person who was in charge of welcoming anyone who came through the door. And I thought, this is, this is what we need to be to each other to provide that welcoming environment where the students and the parents feel that we were all a part of this, which I did. I saw the Patriot High School Drama Club presentation of the classic Spoon River Anthology, which was the drama teacher Corey Barber's final production. And again, it's another way in which I find it's so impre important for our students to have a way to express the complex feelings that they have going on in, inside of them, and I was very grateful for that. Um, I'd like to congratulate, of course, our, our drumline students, the essay contest winners, your ladies, your commitment to being here at each meeting, the, the uh, district volunteers, our 
a bilingual education uh, award recipients. And I'd also like to say again, um, the names of the persons who were recognized, recognized by Riverside County Office of Education at the awards luncheon last week. We had several teachers of the year, including Heather Nell from Peralta, Shane Wells from Mariloma Middle School, Stella Sloan from Harupa Valley High School. Certificated Administrator of the Year is Tammy Elzig. Classified Administrator of the Year is Jeff Lewis. Principal of the Year, Nicholas Blake from Miraloma Middle School. Oh, excuse me, Mission Middle School. Um, <laughs> Mia Culpa. The School Counselor of the Year, Jennifer Green from Patriot. The Site Support Employee of the Year, Lisa Hansen. Um, from the Ed Center Special Teacher on Assignment, the Confidential Employee of the Year, and this always makes me wonder, should I keep that name a secret? <laughs> it was Denise, <laughs> Denise Collins. <laughs> and class Classified Employee of the Year, Jennifer Todd from the Textbook Warehouse. Again, this reminds me that there are many positions that run a district for our children and our teachers to be successful in the marvelous product that we have, which is an educated populace. And thank you to everyone who is involved in this. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. Mrs. Chard. <clears throat> well, since we're having such a longer meeting tonight, I'm not going to repeat everything, but um, uh, Trustee Ortega and Trustee Bradford have covered some of the things that I attended. I did attend the um, uh, recognizing the Celebrating Educators, which is a very nice program, and we're very proud of all of our teachers. Um, I attended the Retirees Banquet, and it was a lot of fun listening to the families be excited when their person was named. And I was proud to say I know a lot of them, so it means I've been in the district a long time. Maybe it's time for me to retire, too. <laughs> um, again. But it was, it's, I hope that they enjoy it because it is, and they will come back. And most of them said they'll be back. They're not really leaving. They're going to be around. So it's nice to know that, that some of our people that leave, that retire, decide that they want to stay around and help, and that's what we need. Um, I want to congratulate uh, their uh, Hoopa Middle School Band um, for their drum, drum line, for their uh, performance tonight, and for, their, um, for winning in the competition that they were in recently. I went to Harupa Middle School, and I don't remember our band sounding like that at all. <laughs> of course, that was a long time ago, and we've advanced quite a bit. Now that we have a drum line, and we have other other bands too, other parts of the band too. I also attended Rubido's um, concert that they had, which was very interesting because they, the, the small concert they had, um, was almost like if you were performing in front of your teacher for your final grade. Each divisional, each person that played an instrument performed their favorite song or their favorite piece, and it was really interesting and just sounded beautiful. Some of them are just outstanding uh, musicians. And then I went to the spring concert for, for the Harup Unified School District and listened to the uh, honor band from the elementary schools, the um, uh, strings from Rubido, or all the strings from all of the schools, actually, and uh, Rubido's uh, band also, concert band. And they are just, it's outstanding. It's just like if you went to a concert. I mean, these kids are not kids. These are outstanding musicians. And I hope some of them go on and, and continue that in their in their college career. And I'm, sometimes it's hard to do. But um, I would like to see some of them do that. Um, I also want to congratulate or thank you, thank the, se the yearbook people for bringing those books. I don't take one every year. I like to have a student get one. And um, but I try and look at through some of them as the year goes on and see what they're um, all about. So I, I take Rubido's on because I've been there. Um, but I also I also think it's really good to help those students that can't afford it because it is quite a bit of money to get a yearbook, and that's their memories of their high school, um, for the elementary actually, because it, it, if you carry your friends from elementary school through high school. And those memories, if you if you don't have an opportunity to take pictures of those, they're there for you, for the things that went on, to remind you year after year what you accomplished what and where you went, um, who your friends were, who your friends still are. 
So I think, you know, if you have an extra few bucks, if you can contribute to any of these schools and purchase a yearbook for a senior or any student that doesn't get one, it would be a nice gesture um, to, to give that to them. Um, and our school board members, student school board members, thank you so much for all the work you do. I know it's hard when you're trying to get down to the very end and um, you're doing finals, you're doing testing, and you're still coming here and spending time with us because we know how long these meetings can get. Um, thank you again. Essay winners, outstanding. Um, we always have some good writers in our district, and, and it's always good to hear that they're winners. Um, our best awards, um, all of the people that won this year I th are just, they're the life of our district. They're the ones that keep working hard and are there to keep our students and our teachers, our staff, moving along with all of, with the, in the bilingual area, which is very difficult. And um, if you try and work with students, some of these people are just fantastic working with these kids. And that's who the, t the student um, relies on to help them. So um, we appreciate you being honored by your, by the, your staff and, and the district. Um, Trustees Bradford, or Bradford and Regal, um, I know how hard it is. I've been through it. And honestly, they, 45 hours is nothing. That is not what how you spend. You spend that just in, the, in their classroom. Your time at home and the reading, they give you an assignment and you have all this reading you have to do too um, before, the, before you go into class so you know what they're talking about. So it's a lot of work. Um, I also attended the National Bus Drivers Day um, for our bus drivers and they had a lot of fun. They had a great breakfast that morning and um, a lot of their, they had all kinds of gifts for them. I think everyone there got a gift donated by the vendors and the people who really appreciate them. So um, next time you see a bus driver, say hello to them, say good morning, they say thank you. Um, I think, and I went to um, a union meeting the other day to get to know some of them and to see how it works, just to give us a little bit of a feel. It always helps to, um, to, know, to know some of the people, see the faces and, and put them in a pr different, perspectives on what you see here or at the sco school site. It's a lot different. Um, and I enjoyed that very much. Thank you for the invitation and I do plan to come back next year. Um, I think that's all. I have a lot of things still coming up. Uh, there's so many more things coming up so we'll have to wait for June to report on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Chard. Mrs. Regal. Okay, so I'm gonna echo what our, my fellow trustees said, um, but in regards to the master and governance, <clears throat> it's not a pity party, but just want to let you know one of the weekends was we also had to review 25 school safety plans. And as I had mentioned in that last board meeting, that was 2,829 pages and in addition to two days of classes. So, um, so if my family's listening, I apologize for being snippy with you, <laughs> but I passed. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Marisnik, um, congratulations, and uh, Shannon, welcome to the district. I'm very partial to Patriot. I'm not gonna try to be, I'm not gonna deny that I'm gonna be biased, but we, uh, my daughter's graduating this year, and um, we had an incredible experience, and, and Mr. Owens, um, it doesn't surprise me that you've been recognized as Administrator of the Year. Um, you, you come in and you had a, you know, really good approach to the students and you, you had the listening ear and, and the partnership and, and we worked together through the four, uh, three years. So um, congratulations to you and um, as well as Gloria and Alicia and Olga, are, are you still here? Um, congratulations on those positions and look forward to that partnership. Um, the past couple of weeks um, have been pretty hectic, but first I also want to thank the student board. Um, today I've known you for what, three, four, five years? Um, you know, our, our girls, you guys went to school together, but Jasmine, I'm excited for your adventure. And, um, you know, thank you for coming to all these board meetings and sitting with us and listening and also voting. That's really, you know, this is your first step as young adults to really vote and be able to express things and, and understand that you don't have to always go with the grain. If you really truly believe in something, you're gonna do it. So thank you for the past year. Um, also, the band, um, Harupa Middle School, um, Mr. Hakamaki is just goes above, beyond in that performance. I mean, really have to say it was hypnotic. And I just uh, was really impressed. And Hakamaki really is so passionate. And also, um, you know, being a band mom, I'm kind of excited for the band director, Mr. Case, to what he's going to inherit to those children and their dedication and their commitment through the band um, for the next four years. 
and the district volunteers, um, that's that's a lot of work when you guys go down to the schools every day or, or show up just to help in classrooms or even the athletics. Um, it really, we are a village and, and that parent involvement really um, takes takes our students to the next level and whether it's just your child individually, you also set an impression to other children. Um, I had my father worked all the time and so I really relied on other parents to set that example and, and there's parents to this day I graduated almost 30 years ago and these parents are still have a special place in my heart because they set an example. And so the parents that come down and, and take that time, you're really influencing so many people and, and I just can't thank you enough. I mean, we are a village and, and we are raising all of our children. So thank you so much. The past couple of weeks, um, I'm gonna try to be brief on this. I know we've um, had a lot going on with the shorter meetings, so there's gonna see a lot more activities. Um, I did in, attend the um, RCC Norco dinner with the president, with Daniel, and who else came with us? It was Sylvia, yes, Sylvia. Um, that was a great fundraiser opportunity that Mr. Or Dr. Reese really focuses on foster children and veterans, so he's raising some funds to help these students that uh, achieve their AA and um, that don't have the funds to apply to a university. He's helping them and he's already helped five students, and last I heard one had already been uh, accepted to USC to go on and, and get their bachelor's. So um, it's a great initiative to continue growth, especially, you know, we're gonna have children, um, we do have a lot of foster children, but he also has a lot of initiatives that he's gonna be working on over the next 10 years. Um, attended the Patriot High, uh, Highest Honors Breakfast a couple weeks ago, it was great to see how many kids um, really have, scored over a 4.0 or had a 4.0 throughout high school and they're graduated the highest um, highest honors so mr owens thank you those kids really encouraged them and they all got to get up and really if they wanted to talk about what college you're going to go to and um you know they had the opportunity to thank the educators or administration that really supported them through their high school careers so um very touching moment and you know, I really appreciate that you, you go that extra effort and have everybody celebrate something that truly is um, recognizable. So thank you. Um, you know, we went to the summit breakfast with uh, Senator Roth and who else was there? Um, Jose Medina in between the two districts covering um, some initiatives in the future. And then, uh, let's see, the retiree celebration. It was great to meet that. I'd like, I haven't met a lot of these people either. Um, it's kind of that bittersweet moment when I'm just getting to meet them and um, they have just this, the warmest heart and a big smile. I don't know if it's smiling because they're retiring or smiling just, you know, they've enjoyed their term here in our district. But I wish them all well. Um, Friday, I attended the uh, FFA 30th Annual Dinner with Kimberly Corbin and Karen Bradford and uh, the FFA parents, uh, and it's truly moving. Uh, it is run by the students, and they did the change of the board. They did all sorts of things that, um, like little leaders, it was great, and so much recognitions, and, um, and Isaac had prepared a speech, it was why and just many reasons of why he does things and, and I look forward to see what the progress and where he goes. I think he's gonna attend Oklahoma and he's gonna follow that political path and he's got quite the voice and um, a reasonable approach. So nice kid, or young man, excuse me. Um, and then today I attended the RCC Presidential Advisory Board. Uh, Mr. Dr. Reese is uh, working on a lot of initiatives to really focus on students. About half our district can attend RCC Norco, so there's a big expansion. Uh, he's looking at some ag programs and STEM buildings and um, housing for veterans and foster youth, so or foster uh, um, students. So there's going to be a big initiative, and I know that he's going to kind of move forward <coughs> and look for that those bonds to really expand on that campus, but they're they're expecting a lot more students and as well as his long-term education plan and the way to increase that to get so many more students to attend that with opportunities to just, you know, completing your AA and then attend a university. So right now they have 7,400 students and they're looking by 2030 to have 12,700, so it's a big plan. 
<clears throat> and then also I want to um, turn to, or Dr. Hansen is not here today. I did receive that mailer and showcasing or, um, you know, highlighting the, what our bond is doing. And I, I just want to compliment that piece was absolutely beautiful. Um, from my marketing perspective, I was really crazy about it. Um, had to send him a text right away and uh, express that. It um, looks great. And I think that our, I'm hoping our residents really look that and see how we're utilizing these dollars to improve our district. And I know that we have a lot more to focus on, but um, great job to the team in getting that message. And, and that call to action was really good to show like, hey, we are, we're using these dollars and, and this is what we've done so far. So that's all I have for you guys right now. Thank you, Ms. Fragel. Just a few things that more importantly, I think, I just wanna congratulate all the appointees. So uh, I just want you to know that the board uh, has every confidence in your abilities and looks forward to you doing great things in the district. So congratulations. And uh, just a couple of things. The, the retirement celebra celebration this past Monday was really a nice event. It would have been done in this meeting here, so you can imagine the, the crowd we would have had. And it's a, it's a lot much nicer setting. I think people will agree that in the theater there, and it's not a board meeting. It's a chance for everybody to get together and talk. So uh, that was really great. Look forward to doing that again next year. And I think that's about it. I think I, we've talked to quite a bit up here. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention, the Spoon River uh, anthology, the play, I've never been to, to a play like that. It was, it was quite um, fascinating, I think. Uh, students, uh, it was a reader's type uh, where they just sit in a, in a chair and, and read their parts, but they did like maybe three or four characters each. I don't remember, but it, they had different accents and it was a, quite, a, quite an interesting um, uh, play to watch. So. Um, thank you to Ms. Barber for that. And I think that's all about, about it for me tonight. So, Mr. Duchon, you got something you'd like to add? Yeah, I don't normally comment at this point in the board meeting, but I wanted to just bring a couple things to your attention. The Kabe Regional Conference on Friday was uh, 900 people were there. Um, I want to thank our board member, uh, Sylvia Ortega, who was on the planning committee, and I also believe Arisema Guzman was also on the, was she on the planning committee? Um, it was, there were great workshops, by the way. Um, three of ours presented, Amy Noyes and Mr. Daniel Richards, um, gave a really uh, important workshop on internet and internet safety and security for children and what parents need to know. In fact, I've asked them to tape it and put it in other places. And Esther Askew also did an excellent presentation and I think amongst everything else, the highlight was our Pacific Avenue Academy of Music, strings played, and they were fantastic. I believe this is probably their largest audience ever, 900 people. And we, we usually don't announce when people are leaving, but somebody special is leaving our district, and I just wanted to recognize her. Ms. Elsa Garza Gonzalez is, I don't know how many years, I won't count them, but you've been here the whole time, I've been here and more. Um, she has, I first met her when she was a teacher, um, became an assistant principal, principal, and then director of student services. She is now going on to sit in a similar seat as this, to be the secretary and superintendent to the Fallbrook Unified Unions High School District. So we applaud your success and we're very thankful to have had you here all these years. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dushan, and congratulations, Elsa. We look forward to, to hearing about your success down there. All right, so let's move on to the next item here. Item four, public verbal comments. First one I have here is Mrs. Josie, Josie Gaitan. Good evening, everybody. And uh, thank you, it's an honor to be here with you guys. Uh, my name is Josie Gaitan. To those that don't know me, I oh, I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> I work for um, Reach Out, a nonprofit organization, and we coordinate the Healthy Harupa Initiative here in Harupa Valley. But um, I wanted to come and invite you personally to our um, 10th annual NIC conference that we are having June 18 and 19. This is uh, we're celebrating our 10th years. 
but after our tenth, our first day of our conference, um, and we have a youth track, so we are all inviting to all the youth here in our district. But um, after our, our, sorry, after our conference, the first day we are having a gala, and that's what you guys got in the invitation. So it's a gala that we're recognizing. It's 50 years that we're celebrating for Reach Out, and we are recognizing uh, 50 people that had started working with us in uh, Reach Out. So with that, we found a couple of them that worked in Reach Out like 50 years ago, <laughs> or 40, something like that. But we are honoring some of our um, principals here at the school district and some um, people here at their school district. So we are inviting you guys to go and honor them. Uh, we are recognizing them because they have been um, working with us. Uh, we were doing uh, murals, so we had a contest at Patriot and Riverdale High School with students. They did a contest doing selfie murals. We put them up on Mission and um, Riverdale Boulevard, so if you guys haven't had the chance to go and see them, go. We did two uh, crosswalk murals with the students at Mich Mission Middle School, and the students at the Saturday detention came out and painted one of the murals by themselves. So you guys have to go and see them. It's in front of Mission Middle School. We have community gardens, and we've been doing um, the little libraries at the school sites for the kids to take books home and come back. At Van Buren Elementary, we were doing all the poles that are on the hallways. And I'm telling you guys so you guys can go see how proud we are about all the things that the principals call us and want to have ideas and want to come in uh, for us to help them do it. So they have all the poles. We painted them into pencils. So they're really cute. But we are recognizing all the teachers and the principals that are uh, helping us come into the school site and helping beautify the school and helping the kids um, learn about nutrition and how to eat healthier. So I'm just here to invite you guys personally. You guys are welcome to come and um, meet with us and see us. If you guys have any questions, just give me a call and we'll be glad to um, help you with anything. If there's any principals here in the audience, you guys are welcome to come and call us and tell us this is the idea that we want, this is what we want at our school, we don't know how to get it, and we'll find a way to get it for you guys. So thank you very much. Thank you for hearing me. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm here to help. Thank you. Thank you, Josie. And I just want to say, for those of you who don't know, Josie is elected director of the Farce District here in Harupa. So uh, we, we thank her for being here today. Also with Reach Out and some of these programs that she, she does a lot of work with our district. So thank you, Josie. Sure. Nice, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> and I do have some speaker cards here. If you do have one to turn in at this time, please uh, give that to the deputy in the back there and she'll bring that forward. Yeah. Okay, next one I have here is Miss Wendy Eccles. <laughs> okay, I see now, I see before Wendy, please, okay. Okay, Mr. Paul Swan Van Lent. Hi, I'm Paul Swan Van Lint, uh, soon to be ex-president of NEA Harupa. Um, congratulations to all of those who were um, recognized for your achievements as students and for students. Um, I thank the board members for uh, listening to me over the past couple of years and uh, seriously considering my statements. Uh, during my two years as president of NEA Harupa, I have focused mostly on one idea for our members who implement the district's policies, programs, and initiatives in reality on our school grounds to be invited to be genuinely collaborative partners in imagining, building, and implementing those policies, programs, and initiatives so that we can best serve the needs of all students. Progress toward shifting the paradigm of the relationship between NEA Harupa, District Administration, and the Board of Education has resulted in some notable developments. One, participation in the CalTERN Labor Management Initiative together with plans to continue with President-elect Wendy Eccles. Uh, two, collaborative effort to address students' behavior and social-emotional learning in a joint committee. 
Three, collaborative creation and implementation of a system for professional development in universal design for learning. Four, active participation and collaborative discussions about issues relating to education at monthly contract meetings by the Assistant Superintendent of Education Services. Thank you. And five, uh, visits by all Board of Education members to NEA Harupa Representative Council meetings. Uh, so nice to have you all there. Thank you. Uh, there are two major signs that point to the need for continuing progress in relationship building between district leaders and NEA Harupa members. First, the largely unchanged feeling by members at large that they are not asked for feedback about their reality on the ground as they engage in the messy and challenging tasks involved with turning the district's vision and plans into real and successful work with and for and in students. The second is our members' continuing perception that district leaders make the decisions that so strongly affect them and their students in a distant place that is far removed from them. My goal for incoming president Wendy Eccles is that she, district administrators, and Board of Education members will continue to strengthen the frequency, quality, and depth of communication so that we can all learn to understand one another better and work in genuine and ever-increasing collaboration to become always better at providing learning without limits for every Harupa student. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay, next we have Ms. Wendy Eccles. I hope I could read my notes. Actually, now you know why uh, Paul needed to go first, because he needed to say my name over and over. And I do apologize. I have a case of the Mondays and a case of the Mays. So if I start rambling, I apologize in advance. Uh, good evening, trustees, Superintendent Deshaun, Cabinet. My name is Wendy Eccles, and I am the President-Elect for NEA Harupa. And I first of all just wanted to start by saying thank you to our Board of Trustees for all of you attending one of our RUP Council meetings this year. In the 14 years I've been active in NEA Harupa, not once have we had all five board members, sitting board members attend our meetings. In fact, I don't remember the last time that we actually had one. So thank you very much for spending time out of your busy schedules. And Mrs. Chard has already said she would come, agreed to come back. So this is the uh, formal invitation for you all to come back and continue those conversations. Um, I found them, I hope that you found them, and I know our members found them very valuable. Um, as incoming president, I'm looking forward to continuing the developing collaborative relationship between the association, uh, district leadership, and the board of trustees. I am committed to open and transparent communication, understanding that sometimes we will have to agree to disagree. Um, our members are passionate, tireless, and hardworking advocates for our students. When we share their realities on the ground, they really are based on this one premise, what's best for our kids. They want positive student outcomes. So when we come to you and say, ask an educator, it's because we want to share what we're seeing and how we think it's affecting student outcomes. And that is, I think, what all of us agree on, and that is our goal here for Harupa Unified School District, and this is the shared goal between NEA Harupa and the district, is positive student outcomes for all of our students. So I just want to say thank you for your time, and I look forward to continuing working with you next year. Thank you, Wendy. All right, so next one, uh, Ms. Dawn Falkenberg. Did I get that right? Good evening. Um, I would like to speak to you tonight about the walk-on cheer coaches at Patriot High School. My name is Dawn Falkenberg and my daughter Kaylee is a JV cheerleader at PHS. This year has been a very difficult year for my child, not only because she was a freshman, but because of the favoritism of the walk-on cheer coaches. I have sat back and watched while my daughter was treated unfairly. I have also watched while varsity girls were allowed to mistreat the JV girls just because they were JV. All of this was allowed by the coaches. I did not want to say anything to the coaches because I was afraid my speaking up 
would make things worse for my daughter. Unfortunately, my daughter has felt all year that the coaches don't like her and her opinion was reinforced after the competition squad tryouts. Last October, 21 girls tried out for the competition squad. The year before, there were 20 girls on the squad. They were called the Elite 20. So this year, there was only one more girl trying out and there were spots. However, the coaches cut four girls from the squad and made a team of 17. I realize that it is their prerogative to choose whomever they want and they are trying to choose the best. That argument would have helped my daughter accept her being cut from the team if she hadn't had more skills than two of the girls that were chosen. Several girls were chosen that couldn't even do a cartwheel when tumbling skills are desired and my daughter can do a front handspring back walk over a cartwheel and round off. I was approached by parents of girls on the comp squad that told me my daughter should have made the team and they didn't understand why she didn't. I didn't want my daughter to allow this rejection to keep her from reaching her goals. I tried to console her for not making the competition team by telling her to use this as her motivation to improve her skills. I told her that if she was one of the best girls trying out, the coaches would not be able to not select her for the varsity tryouts this coming school year. My daughter took my words to heart and worked harder for the tryouts than I have ever seen her work before for anything in her life. She was at the gym for months prior to the tryouts, perfecting her skills and working on getting a back handspring. She was there four nights a week. And of course, I was there too. And would often see Coach Paula as she was coaching the Riverside Heat team. Coach Paula rarely said hello to her and never recognized her hard work. In fact, another JV cheerleader was also going to the gym as much as my daughter and Coach Paula would make a point to greet and hug the other girl and would hug her mother who was sitting next to me and would ignore me. I told my daughter to not worry about it. Just say hello to Coach Paula and dazzle her with your skills at tryouts. I kept telling her that hard work pays off. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case for cheerleading tryouts. I don't have enough time to tell you all of the reasons that I have that I have seen over the past year, but I would really like to know why the tryouts were even held. It seems to me the teams were selected long before the tryouts. This was further emphasized when a returning varsity mom told me the scores do not matter. It all depends on what is needed for the team. So I ask you, why are we letting these girls believe they can make a team when it doesn't matter how good they are? If Paula doesn't want them on the team, they're not on the team. Furthermore, I, I did contact the school. I talked to the athletic director. He referred my calls back to the coach. The coach has never called me back. Um, I, I would like to know why my daughter was not selected for varsity. I mean, I skipped over a lot of the details, but she was had a flawless tryout, and the girl she tried out with um, made three mistakes and had no tumbling. And I already told you what her tumbling skills were. Well, the girl that made the mistakes made the team and my daughter did not. So it's very difficult for her to understand what happened. And um, I believe good coaches encourage their athletes and want all of them to succeed. And I do not believe that this is what is happening. This coach lacks integrity, good leadership skills, and plays favorites. So I ask that there be an investigation regarding this. And I can give you the um, notes that I have that I skipped over that said the reasons why I felt there were lots of things that happened throughout the year that I just don't feel were um, above board. I mean, she told girls before tryouts, don't have your parents call and ask why you didn't make it because I'm not talking to your parents about it. And I don't understand as a coach why you would say that to girls. She also asked parents to be board members in April. Um, and how did she know who was going to be on the cheer team and when the tryouts were May 3rd? Yeah. So how do you pick Can board you members right there, when... Don? Um, have you talked to, to the principal at Patriot? I did not. I talked to the athletic director and he told me to, that he was giving my message to the coach and she was to call me and she never did. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I would probably recommend that, I think. Uh, and I don't know, Mr. Deshaun, if you have anything to add. <coughs> Why don't you, if you could give your notes to Mr. Brooks. I um, would be glad we to. We will look into it. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate your okay. taking the yeah, time. Yeah, thank you.
Well, thanks for, for coming out, Don. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. Next one we have here, Miss Julie Paul. Julie Paul? Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm speaking on two topics. The first topic is how can we get the PE credit for athletes? I am only speaking because this actually affects my daughter. My daughter's a junior at Hooper Valley High School. She's been on varsity swim for three years, water polo for three years, and played basketball during her freshman year before she decided to switch to water polo. And she took freshman PE and got her 10 credits during her sixth period PE class her freshman year. However, her sophomore year, there was no sixth period PE class. Additionally, the, her, the passion that she has is theater, and advanced theater is sixth period, so it conflicts. There's also other sports that don't have a sixth period athletics class, like golf, wrestling, sometimes cheer, sometimes other sports, depending on the coach. And so those students lose out on getting that credit. Our student athletes spend um, at least two and a half hours every day at practice, which is about the same amount of time as a regular PE class in a regular student in a regular PE class for the whole week. So their season of 10 weeks plus, if they go to CIF, or the preseason when they're practicing even before then, is a lot of physical activity, but they are not earning any um, PE credit for that. And so I'd like to know why they can't earn that PE credit. I've been told that there was an online PE class that she could take, and then that got canceled this year. Unless you failed PE, then you could take the online class. But athletes who are in AP classes and honors classes, they don't get that special little perk. Um, the, um, sorry. So, I've been told also that there's a waiver that students who are in outside activities such as dance or other athletic um, endeavors, they can get it signed off. I was also told she has to wait for that for her senior year. So she's about to be a senior in a couple weeks. And I would just like to know what, what is the status of, is there a waiver or isn't there a waiver? Can we get PE credits for these athletes or not? Um, right now, we have to, totally put everything on hold for family for summer vacation because she has to take the summer school class to get her PE credits because she wants to follow her passion and take six period theater and, um, and yet still play sports next year. So it's, it's pretty frustrating as a parent and for her as a student to feel like she can't make it both work. Um, I just wanna take about a few seconds longer to speak on behalf of some of my colleagues we had um, someone from my department who was on maternity leave this entire year. And the students in her classes really missed out on a proper education um, because she's a specialty subject. And there doesn't seem to be a contingency plan anywhere for teachers who teach special subjects, choir, band, theater, photography, fine arts. Um, I'm sure they're not alone. Um, <clears throat> I would just like to know if there's something that could be put in place to find special subs who are qualified for those positions so that the kids don't have to miss out. And that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Julie. Mr. Ms. Paul, uh, Ms. Paul, first of all, if you could talk with Mr. Dubrowski, he could go over the requirements. The, the requirements for PE are set by the state and differentiated, so he could probably go over those with you. It ranges certain classes that aren't logical or accepted, certain ones that are, so he could go over that. I'm not sure what your options are, but it is both the state and district requirement for two years of PE. Second of all, we always do the best we can to put qualified subs in the classroom. Sometimes it's very difficult to get anybody who doesn't have just a regular sub-credential 
So we do our best. It's in specialty subjects, you're absolutely right. It's very difficult to find a sub who can teach shop or choir or band or whatever there is, but we always try. So thank you. Okay. Um, I just want to say that I have heard that there are other districts that do give PE credit for their athletes. It will, yeah, it will. That's why I want you to talk to Mr. Dubrowski. Okay. It depends on what the class is. The class has to meet core requirements for PE, which are set by the state. So it's not just like a wrestling class. It has to meet other standards. So. Thank you, Ms. Paul. All right, last card I have here is from uh, Ms. Jeanette Picasso. Good evening, board. Um, I want to, again, my name is Jeanette Picasso, and I'm a parent of four children, high school, junior high, elementary, and an in-home um, service, um, early start uh, prevention program. Uh, for a young uh, child, I'm going to protect my children's identity and information, um, and I won't disclose much, but I would like the courtesy, since I have four children within three different, four different um, age sections and services, the opportunity to speak a little bit longer than just three minutes. I know we'll prep your time. If not, um, just let me know yes or no as we get closer to the end of the three month mark. In reference, I'm going to respect the rules of this gov of this board, and I'm here with um, complaints and asking for, so and I'm soliciting that you hear me as a parent of special needs children, but also as a prior educational rights holder for foster care children who are not being serviced appropriately by this school district. Um, and I'm gonna save my complaints and concerns to what is called the Williams Uniform Complaint or the Uniform Complaint. And I offer this board, since you will be discussing it in item, in item 23 and item 22, that it actually specify once you get to that, whether or not you're gonna be approving it, that, that those two forms I want the committee to hear or the board to hear to please have them circulated in the parent pamphlet and information which we as parents receive when we first um, become residents of this district and or so that parents know where it's at. It is very difficult to obtain the current one and, uh, and also to file it. Having to go to the website for indigent individuals who don't have email communications or websites, having to use public, um, in public computers because the local district won't offer and even trying to get an interpreter, a certified interpreter to hear the concerns of a parent so that it could be properly documented. With that said, I will say I have seen at non-public school settings contracted by Harupa Unified School Districts bugs the size of two inches. And in fact, my daughter has suffered injuries to her legs based on bug uh, infestations at two schools um, within your school district. I voiced my complaints and concerns before. Also, Williams' concern, my, chi my children are special needs, and apparently because they're special needs, they don't get a Chromebook. But once I made it official through the CDE or other people, then all of a sudden they got a Chromebook. Now, again, more importantly, my name is Jeanette Picasso. I've met and I had the pleasure of meeting and seeing a couple of you at legislative forums and breakfasts. It is appalling and very disrespectful to me as a parent when we're told that there's an L LCAP and wanting to have parent engagement and communication. And we as parents look to our CAC representatives in order to hold and give us information regarding, information regarding our pupils and what have you. It is embarrassing to attend the Riverside SELPA and my CAC is not there representing. I have applied 16 times for that position as a parent of special needs, but also as a parent within our community. And Karina Becerra has denied each application or said, let me first ask other people if they want to do it before I take your application. I most recently sent it, and again, I'm now told that I'm being considered. I strongly urge this board to consider my application. I wanna work within the community to assist and 
and please, aid please, please, our pause, consumers and, please and our clients. You to wrap it up. But before we do, before we do that, sir, I've also applied for the state legislative committee forums that will sit on a couple of um, committees to bridge the needs for special needs within our community and outside, also outside of special needs and also funding for foster care children. I would like you to have the opportunity to meet me more at length, but more importantly, put on the board agendas in the future, and I know your rules, I know by which time I have to submit, that it be heard that perhaps this board should hear of making a separate representative parent who knows special education, who has been educated in the born, born at, and has some information regarding governance, masters, and what have you. You cannot elect an individual who's already indigent and ignorant to what is so, supposed to be happening to give us the information and to, you know, to decipher among the community. So Ms. Picasso, I urge you just to consider it. As I mentioned before, I think uh, when we first met, that I'd be willing to, to, to review anything you want to provide me, and I, that offer still exists. So if and I you thank would like you. to do that, I mean, I thank do you, so. sir. And the only reason why I have not met with you is because I currently am working on a petition that's 500 pages before the, the self-determination um, program in order to have funding for non -pro for for vouchers mm -hmm. to to regional center consumers who understand their person center Picasso, planning. So I I I again, okay. all I can say Ms. is Picasso, I thank you, but I have IEPs, due process, comments. and other things. And I'd be happy to hear anything, but please, uh, please, uh, you know, we have a board meeting to continue here, and uh, you've probably spoken for more than six minutes. I did. I'm uh, sorry. I, I so, apologize. Yeah. So we have a three-minute time limit, so I'd appreciate it if you would. Uh, One brief question. No, With, please. For inclusion Please. and segregation, who does that complaint go to? If you want to put anything in writing, the uniform you can send complaint that procedure um, form is on the website. You can find it on the website. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else like to address the board at this time? I'd be happy to give you three minutes. Okay. Seeing none. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to the action session, and I'd ask the board members to. Oh, sorry, sorry. Skipping ahead, getting ahead of myself here. Um, number five, administrative reports and written communications. 5A, adult education program update. Mr. Dubrowski. Thank you. Tonight, Dr. Anna Marie Montanez, the principal of the Learning Center and our adult education program, is here to provide the board an update on the adult education program options available for JUSD. You'll find that uh, our program is growing and becoming more fabulous every day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you for this opportunity. Mr. Duchamp, thank you for having me here. Um, Board of Education, thank you for taking the time to hear a little bit about um, what we're doing at the adult school and just want to share with you some insights where, we're, where we've been, where we're going, and what we see for the future. Um, there we go. Uh, just a little background on the Department of Ed, there are seven different areas that they allow the adult schools to provide programs in. Here in Harupa, we provide five of them. We have high school diploma, adult literacy. We have ESL and citizenship, um, an adult with disabilities program, CTE, and a parent engagement. Um, when I came here a couple of years ago, we were mostly high school diploma and ESL. Since then, we've added CTE classes, we've added the parenting class, and we've added um, an adults with disabilities program. So we're really happy about all the changes that we've seen so far. Um, just a little bit, a lot of times people say, well, you have all this money, you're starting all these programs for adults, why can't you just use the money for children? And um, back before the recession hit, there were categorical funds. The categorical funds were set for certain programs. Adult ed had funds at that time. When flexibility went into effect, many districts decimated their adult ed programs because they needed the money in order to be able to help the children. Um, thankfully, Harupa didn't do that. So um, after that, money came back into play. We had ABG funds that are now considered CAPE. So it's the California Adult Education Program funds that are specifically targeted for our adult population. Um, last year, we got 988,000, almost a million. Um, we're close to getting another 100,000 this year that will go into our funding. Um, in order for us to be able to spend the money, it goes into a consortia. 
Our consortia consists of eight members. It's us along with five other um, adult schools, the Riverside County Office of Education and RCCD. So what we do is today, I had a consortium meeting. We meet together once, at least once a month. We develop a plan. We look strategically at how we're going to implement our programs. We all work together to make sure there's not duplication, make sure we're doing what we need in order to serve the community. Um, in your packets, you'll find a little book from BW Research. That's a recent uh, research company that did lots of, lots of research in our area to see where the need is, to see what programs we need and identifying so we can target which adult schools and which different entities need to focus on on the different programs for our community. Um, also our funding, we get we owe a Title II funds from what we call CASAS testing, very similar to what children do. Um, at the beginning of each year, we have a baseline test that students take. Throughout the course of the year, they take tests to make sure, to ensure that they have um, some type of a, an improvement based on how many levels they, they improve, that determines a certain amount of funding that we receive. Um, just a little bit on that, we we're very fortunate that we s transferred over to a different data collection system. What that did for us was it helped us really capture what we're doing and be able to identify um, the, the progress that we're making. So just to give you a little bit, each pay we, we have what's called payment points. Each payment point has a monetary amount affixed to it. Uh, last year, we had 438 payment points that went in and reported to the state. This year, as of today, we have 1,253 payment points, and we're not done with our scoring yet. So we're really excited about that and really looking forward. We've put um, mechanisms into place where we're making sure to capture all that information, and we're really starting to structure things so our students understand the importance of taking the test, and the teachers utilize it as a tool for them to be able to decide if the students are gonna advance or remain in their programs. All right. So again, just a little bit about what the numbers look like. Uh, last year, we served over 1,200 students, like I said, in the five different content areas. Uh, this year, we're at over 1,500, so we've seen an increase in that. We have classes at the Learning Center. We use the Rubido campus for many, of our, for many of our classes. We have three off-site schools and we use a Nueva Vista welding lab. Um, over at the Learning Center, now that we do not have really Steps Community Day School anymore, we've been able to open that up. We utilize it all morning long. We have ESL classes there from 9 a.m. to noon. We um, have the adult transition program there. Then about three o'clock we start up again and we have classes from three until eight, nine, depending on what the program is. The welding class goes until 10 o'clock. Um, we're able to, since, since the Learning Center only has 10 classrooms, what we do is we satellite out to Rubido. Rubido is gracious enough to let us use our classrooms. So all of our ESL program is over there. We use 10 classrooms over at Rubido every evening. So that helps us so we're not limited to what we can offer um, our students. So again, our current class offerings, we have levels one through six of ESL. So again, we take anyone, if you're over 18, 18 I think right now our, our um, oldest student is about 75. Uh, we have conversation class if they need assistance just with an everyday conversation. A lot, a lot of students feel really uncomfortable and are nervous and are scared and don't want to speak, so this gives them the opportunity for real life interaction uh, with our teachers and with other um, individuals. We have citizenship. So we've been very fortunate. We've had lots of students that have been able to pass their citizenship class, their citizenship test because of the class. Uh, in our high school diploma, we offer an online option as well as a traditional book and paper. Um, we have a GED prep. We offer it both in English and in Spanish. So many of our students come to the United States. They're very educated in their countries, but they have nothing because noth it doesn't count the same here. So a lot of them can go in. They can take a GED in Spanish that covers all the same material because the language is different. And they're able to at least use that as a springboard and then they learn the English in order for them to be able to move on, be it in more training, in a career, whatever they need. Um, we have computers, we have a beginning and an intermediate class where they learn everything from how to turn on a computer and how to use a mouse, which can be very intimidating for lots of adults that don't know anything about that. And um, we started Jade, which is Harupa Adults with Disabilities Education. So here we're looking at taking the 18 to 22 population that ages out of the adult transition and giving them um, employment skills so that they'll be able to move on. We have a partnership with the Inland Regional Center where they will hire them or the Department of Rehab, depending on where they're at, 
and they'll pay up to $10,500 of their salary for them to work and work in a training program. After the certain amount of time is up, either the employer can hire them or the student can go in to try something else. So maybe they worked in a restaurant for the $10,500 worth of their salary. If that didn't work out, then they can move on and work at Walmart. So we have a partnership with Walmart where some of our kids, our students are, are working there as well. Um, for our CTE, uh, we have a medical assistant, pharmacy tech, security guard, welding, HVAC, and our phlebotomy will start in the summer. Um, just a little bit about those. When uh, I came here, Mr. Duchamp made it very clear he wanted a program similar to where I came from, but with a minimal cost. So I, I feel very blessed and very lucky. Many of our students would not have access to any of this if we charged, you know, the $4,000 that other public schools charge, not to mention the $20,000 that many of the private schools charge for the same type of program. Actually, I think ours is better. Um, but our medical assistant program, just a little bit about that, that's eight months long. Um, this is our third year. Our third class of students will be graduating in June. Um, they do 160 hours of externship. What we have found is our students are trained very well. We're very fortunate to have an amazing teacher doing that where she really trains them and gets them ready to be out in the workforce. Um, what we found last year was that we had a 90%, over 90% retention rate the last three years of the students that start. So mind you, they start day one in our program. It's that one cohort that goes all the eight months of class and then the 160 hours of externship. Um, we have a job placement rate of over 80%. So many of our students, where they're working, where they're doing their externship, they're getting jobs there as well. Um, last year we had one urgent care where the students went in, we had five students that were placed at the urgent care. When they were done with their externship hours, they fired five of the medical assistants that worked there and hired our five students. So that speaks volumes to the type of training that they're getting from our, from our instructor, Ms. Rivera. Um, we have a pharmacy technician class, that one as well. What they end up doing is after their course, they have a 24 week course. It's a hybrid where three days they're in class, two days is online. They also have an externship component to that. Um, currently, we finally have our contracts in place for CVS and Walgreens. So we're placing the students there. Um, we have a couple that have already been hired by Walgreens. Um, when they're finished with that, they get registered with the state to be able to work at any type of a pharmacy. They learn everything from how to work in a retail, how to work in a hospital, um, how to do compounding. They learn lots of, of really useful things in the class. Um, we were fortunate enough to get offered the welding shop, which is amazing. In our welding program, it's a 16 week long course where our students go in and they learn everything from very basic. We're adding more machinery and different types of welding. So if a student needs to learn something particular, let's say stainless steel welding for a certain job that they wanna get. Our instructor, he's a former Harub Valley high grad who is amazing with our students and he works currently as a welder. So he brings all those real world experiences into the classroom, teaches them what they need to do if they wanna get a union job, if they need to take um, the welding exam for them to be certified. He is also instructor, an instructor at Mount SAC. So we have an articulation agreement with Mount SAC. Our students can go over there. They get credit for our class and they're able to, Mount SAC uh, certifies students. We're not there yet, but our hope is that one day we'll be able to certify them as well at our site. Um, we have a security guard training class, and this class is very quick. It's a five-week class where they meet twice a week. Um, we are certified by the state of California to offer the security guard training exam. When our students finish, they take the exam with us at our school, and then we sign off on their um, applications, and they're able to go, go up and send it into Sacramento to be able to get their guard card. Um, we were charging $25. We're not charging anything anymore. And part of our WIOA funding, we um, have dedicated funding for what we call EL support. So not only do we have a regular, the regular security guard training teacher in our class, we also have an ESL teacher. So if a student is maybe lacking a little bit in the confidence to be successful in that class, that parent, I mean that student comes in with that teacher and they're offered added ESL support so that they'll be able to pass the test in English. Um, HVAC. We started our HVAC class. We're hoping to, to get it up and going again. We have uh, three different courses that'll make up the program so that they'll be able to take their, their exam to become HVAC certified. Um, we had our introductory session, which went really well. Um, again, 
we have minimal cost on this and the welding. They're $125 only because they get the welding, they get everything they need, all safety, helmet, jacket, gloves, everything to actually be able to go out and work and they get to keep that. For the HVAC, they get a bag of tools, so all the tools they will need to be able to go out and um, be able to get a job doing that. Um, our additional services, so this is, these are other things that we have on our site as well. We have a college and career center clerk who helps our students if they need to um, just work on a resume, they don't know where to go, they're looking for a job. Um, we have an on-campus representative from RCC. So we have someone on our campus once a week who helps and is the direct conduit. So if a student is interested in going to RCC, be it academic or be it to continue on to CTE, he's there to help with that. We do resume writing, we do interview workshops, and just a little bit more about our RCC um, advisor. He's amazing. So like I said, he's on campus once a week. He will go over with the student their applications, their registration. Um, we currently have on campus, we'll have one next week, a non-credit certificate bearing class. So our students have access to that. They don't have to go to RCC. Um, RCC waives all fees for them and they're given a certificate at the end. So right now we're doing business. So what we've coupled that with is our medical assisting students. So they're learning customer service and all of that, getting a certificate from RCC. So when they finish our program, not only will they be done with their medical assisting, they'll also have that as well. And it's all free. Br they bring the teacher to us, they bring the books to us, they register them and do everything for that. Um, he's really great about having campus tours. So we have very specialized tours where we have our medical assisting going to see the RN program. We have the welding class going to see their welding class. We have HVAC going to see their HVAC so our students can see what other possibilities there are. A lot of times we just kind of feel like they don't know what's out there, so you can't dream, you can't plan for something that you don't know exists. So by opening it up, we have our ESL classes, everything from level one to high school diploma, they go to RCC tours. And at first they're like, why are we going? We're on level one, we don't need to know. It could be for their kids, it could be for their you know, relatives, it could be for themselves. I always think if you don't see what's out there, you will never know and plan. Um, a lot of our students are parents, you know, parents are children's first teachers. So if they establish that, many of them say, I go home and I do my homework and my kid does homework too. So we do it together as a family. Uh, looking at adult ed and family self-sufficiency and what that means, it's like there's no better way for us to help our community than for us to be able to, to do that. Um, a little bit of the updates of what we've done. Uh, we were WASC accredited last year. We uh, did not have that before, so we're very excited about that. So that opens up many doors for our graduates now. Um, in our facilities, we have a full medical assistant lab, we have uh, a pharmacy tech lab, we have our HVAC mini lab that we created. Um, in our curriculum, we're working really hard right now to make sure it's solidified. It's not just, oh, let's come and you know read a few words and see if the students will learn. Um, I don't know if you know or not, but there are adult ed college and career standards. There are adult ed uh, common core standards. So all of our curriculum, we're making sure that it's all focused around that. So when our students finish each level, they, they are truly learning what they need to learn and they're able to advance on into, um, into a higher level of education. Um, in technology, Mr. Lewis has been very nice to, to help us with that. We have um, carts, we have Chromebook carts, we have laptop carts. So all our students have access to all of that. We have online curriculum to help supplement a lot of the ESL, the high school diploma, just so that our students, we know in our day and age, we need to have technology in order to be able to function. And like I said, many of our students, if they come from a country or they come from somewhere where they didn't have access to that, it's very intimidating and we make sure that, that we try to break those barriers so that they're able to be successful. Um, so that's pretty much it, that's what I have. You know, I, I feel very blessed and very lucky to work here in Harupa, I, I have a great time, I have a wonderful staff. And, and everyone's made it you know, really easy for me to do my job. Um, I think if we have educated parents, educated students, and educated families, that's where we need to see our community go. You know, I, I know education has been very instrumental in my life. I see our students, you see the struggle, and, and it really is enlightening. I mean, when you, when you see graduation next week, for those of you who will go, it's, it's very impactful to see these students that should have graduated five, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And to see the pride, we had a student come in the other day. It was a gentleman, I'd say probably mid to late 30s. And he said, 
No one really knew that I didn't have my high school diploma. He said, but it was always hanging over the back of my head that I never finished. He said, and I'm a coach. So I'm always telling the kids, you need, your, you need to go to school, you need to finish, you need to finish. And I thought, what a hypocrite I am. So he started school, didn't tell anyone, has been doing it for the last five years. He'll be graduating next week, and his family doesn't know that he's gonna graduate. So he's inviting them all to the graduation, and that's where they're gonna find out that he, he's been doing this. So, like I said, for me, it, it, it's an honor and it's a pleasure to, to work here, and, and I really just love what I do. So um, I gave you all a packet that kind of just has some information on our school. It has the PowerPoint. It has um, part of our consortia. We hired a, a research company called BW Research where they really looked at the community. You can take a look at that. It's really some, some powerful information in there, like I said, that we use to plan for what we're going to do. Um, and then just some little goodies, so I don't know if you have any questions for me. Mr. Sean, you got a couple yeah, comments? Yeah, before you step down, because I'm sure the board will, may have some questions or comments. First of all, I want to thank you. Those absolutely were my instructions. <laughs> uh, and in addition, we talked about um, there's sort of the Inland Empire economist, John Busing, talks about short-term high-impact training, where people can get jobs in high high impact areas where it takes less than a year to get the training and they go out in the field ready to work. We believe, and this is just a demonstration of it, when you educate the adults, you educate the children and the best way to fight poverty is by giving adults jobs. I, I just want to thank Dr. Montaigne. She has gone, I shouldn't tell you this, but far beyond my expectations and just built an absolutely incredible adult education program that I think rivals any, including where you came from. <laughs> I think you beat them, but um, I agree. We, yeah, <laughs> no, we, and so, but I, I think the real impact is when you see what her students do in their class, and that they they go out with high rates of success into the job fields, and they have work. So, thank you because that's been a great contribution, not only to our district but really to the community of Harupa Valley. So, thank you. Yeah. Any questions from the board? Ms. Bradford? Dr. Montañez, I wanted to say I've met five or six of your Herb Area uh, Disabilities Education students with uh, Jeff Holt. Um, he's brought them to Queen of Hearts Therapeutic Writing Center where I write grants. And I've watched, the thing that impresses me about this is how polite all of the students are, and how he teaches them when a job is, I mean, when a job is finished, what you have to do that a job is finished. And, and he has such a nice way of working with them that um, they're just delighted yeah. to be with him. So thank you very much. No, they're a pleasure. They're on my campus now all day, and it's just, it, it's great to have them there. It really is. I will. Anybody else? I just had a comment. I, since I met you, I, you've just been such an inspiration to me just to keep doing what you're doing. And, and to, you know, you speak from the heart and you speak from experience as well that you want. I, I, and I see it. And since I met you, you want what others, it was really hard for you to get when you were, you know, younger. Mm -hmm. and, and you want that for others, individuals. And, and I can so tell it. So thank you. I think Karupa is so blessed and honored to have you and continue to do what you're doing in any way that we can support you. That's what we're here for too. So no, thank you. Anybody else? Mrs. Chart. I want to congratulate you too because I met you at the first graduation and we just had the one class that was really starting and here we are three years later with a, a portfolio that is outstanding. Um, we're well known around the around the community and the district and the areas um, because of our adult pro ed program. And I sat on the WASC um, uh, interview panel mm -hmm. when they were when we were going for accreditation, and they were very impressed. They told me they were very impressed, and um, the things that I said really didn't change their mind. Mm -hmm. They already knew that they were going to give it give us a good rating, and uh, I think it's all because of you and the hard work that you put through it. You you have an outstanding mindset and um, vision that is wonderful. Well, can Thank I just you. say, you know, my, my staff is amazing. You know, Your my staff. teachers are amazing. And, you know, we work really hard on 
culture and relationships and what all that means because at the end of the day until we can get along with each other we're not going to get along with our students and, and I'd like to think that you know that is at the forefront of what we do and every staff meeting we have our welcome circle and we talk and we cry and we do all this stuff and it, it's made such a difference in in how we come across to our students I think and what our success has really been you know, and, and I attribute it to them because I mean without their hard work you know we're just one little person <laughs> and it's a village and when yes, they work it is together a village. Look what they and can do. Definite, oh, yeah, they are amazing. Thank you. Mrs. Regal? Thank you. I really, um, I'm a firm believer about educating everybody and in, in not just a certain class or anything. So even if they come back later, and I'm sure that some of these kids were dropping out of mm -hmm. school and didn't see that hope, and, and maybe that's, you know, always, I always say that to parents, especially, that, ah, my kid's struggling. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Everybody has their time. Yeah. And so they probably come back with a vengeance and, and really just drive it and saying, you know what? It's not as hard as I thought it was. It's just if I focused. But I do have a question. When, the, when a young adult comes back or even an adult comebacks, do you evaluate what, what was already completed and then what they have to finish or do you kind of already have a set program as saying like you just take these courses and you know we'll give you the diploma or ged how yeah, does no, that so work we have our our high school requirements our typical 220 our requirement is 190 credits to graduate but we do have all of the you know four years of english two years of three years of math and so if you have, if you come with, you know, some background from high school, we get your transcripts, we review them, and we can say, okay, maybe you've done two years of English, so you only have two years left. So every person is different depending on, you know, how much school they've completed. If they come from another country and they haven't done anything, then a lot of times they have to start from scratch, just depending on, on where they're at. For the GED, um, a lot that too depends on what their background is. What we do when they come in is we do a, a practice test that will tell us, okay, you know, maybe of the five areas that you have to complete, you would successfully finish, you know, language arts and math, but you still need help in social studies, um, science, and writing. So then our teachers focus on that. So each person is very different, just depending on what what they come and bring to the table. Okay, and the, like a, the gentleman that's seventy five. Also, oh, it's, it's a female, Isabel. So he, she's our, our poster child. So she came back. She was, you know, she came from Mexico. She's like, I came here. I had my children, and all my life was all about my kids. And she goes, I now it's my time. So she took ESL. She completed the six levels. Uh, she said, I want my high school diploma. I never got one. And my and she told me that she just told me the story the other day. She goes, my sister used to say, you're so stupid, you can't get it. She said, and I wanted to prove to her that I could. So last year, she finished all her requirements. She'd stay up all night and do her homework, and she finished her high school diploma. She graduated in our ceremony last year. Now, she still takes ESL because she still needs to practice, but she is registered at RCC. She's taking the culinary classes at RCC because she wants to be a college student. Wow. So it's really amazing when you see just the difference and the different types of students. When our students finish their high school diploma, um, we let them pick a song, and then we play it on the loudspeaker and then you know the teacher will come and you know oh congratulations we're so proud of you and kind of give them a little you know high five for what they've done and a lot of our students will bring their families to be there on that day when they get to play their song they'll record it to send to their moms or dads or whoever thought they couldn't do it and we had this one girl i was in i was in a classroom testing and the you know the song comes on and interrupts the class and her song was at last James and I thought how appropriate so I walk out and I was like Mr. Navarro's best song yet I go he goes I want you to meet the, the young lady who you know who, who picked the song so she comes up to me and she's in tears and she goes I took me nine years to finish she said but life happens and I just couldn't get to it but now at last I'm done and it was just so like oh this is why we do what we do <laughs> well thank you so much and you know sticking to it and encouraging the adults to move forward and and even go on to college or their certification. So thank you for everything. Yeah, well, thank you. Jasmine, you got any questions, yeah, comments? I, I have two questions. Okay. Okay, uh, I didn't know if you went over this, but um, to get into this program, do you have to, like, apply or, like, um, do you have to pay for it? For like, which one? I'm sorry. For the, cl the classes. So for ESL, ESL high school diploma citizenship, that's all free. So there's no high school diploma. We ask for a $60 deposit only because we either check out a – a textbook or sometimes a 
from the book that's in there. I just didn't know that. Um, but we give the money back when you turn your, your equipment back in. Um, for the medical assistant and pharmacy tech, it's a $200 fee, and that covers books, scrubs, all equipment, CPR card, everything you need for the class. And like I said, the other two are 125 for the first class, so for welding and um, HVAC, because you get a, a lot of equipment that you take. So the equipment's probably like $300 worth of equipment, but we were able to get a discounted price. So then after you pay that for the other sections of the class, it's $25. I forgot my other question, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How much would a pharmacy tech class like cost in a private school? About twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. Medical assistant as well. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, thank you, Anna Marie. Thank I, I, you. you know, I remember. I don't know if you remember when we first met. Yeah. It was at the uh, the farm animals. We were oh, in charge right. of <laughs> scooping up the farm stuff, and uh, <laughs> literally. And I didn't realize how amazing. <laughs> You were, and I, I mean, you've done such an amazing job with the students, and I think I remember Isabel last year from the graduation, yeah. there was another young lady, she was 35, I think, and her her parents and family had also discouraged her from, yeah. you know, why are you doing this, mm -hmm. and so, and the, and the programs, the fantastic work, so. So I don't know if you remember, Mr. Deshaun, Alicia was one of our first graduates that gave a speech, and she was supposed to come today, but she recently had some health issues that, that stopped her from coming, but she had, hadn't finished high school, so she's like, 22 years later, I finished. When she was done, she went on to the medical assistant program. She was our valedictorian for the medical assistant program, perfect attendance, valedictorian. Um, she is currently, she was accepted to the LVN program. So she's like, my goal is to be an RN, and that's what I'm gonna do. So. I believe she's the, the student I made stand up at graduation. That was her, yeah, I that was her, her very yes. Well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Anna Marie, for thank this you. information. And thank uh, you. appreciate it. All right. On to number five B Report on Contract Monitoring Review for the State Preschool Program. Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you. This is on administrative reports, but it probably should have gone on recognition because it's pretty impressive. Um, as, as most of you know, the, the preschool environment, Head Start State Preschool is super highly regulated. And there are lots of inspections, and I think that the inspectors work on commission because they find something every time. Like there's always gotta be something to find. There's gotta be findings. But um, this time, the CDE visited our school readiness center the week of April 29th, conducting the contract monitoring review for the state preschool program. And we were happy to report that they went back empty-handed because there were no findings. I see we have some preschool folks in the back. If you could stand and wave and so we can salute you again. The consultants visited each of the preschool sites and reported back great things about the classrooms and staff, and we would like to congratulate and thank School Readiness Center staff who worked very hard to keep up with the regulations, and there are many, and the many intricate details of the preschool contract. So congratulations to our School Readiness staff. They did a great job. Congratulations to you all, and thanks for staying around. I mean, it was really, uh, I know, it's been a long meeting, but uh, congratulations again. Okay, 5C, review approval of 2018-2019 second interim financial report. Mrs. Ford. The Riverside County Office of Education has notified the district that its 2018-2019 second interim financial report has received a positive certification. The certification letter is included in the backup materials. Any questions, comments? Nope. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Ford. And 5D, other, written, other administrative reports and written communications. I have none, except sometimes I sit up here and I am just so proud of the things our staff do. And um, I mean, tonight, Dr. Montagna is just amazing. That just turned into a, a model program. But just so many of the things you heard tonight about presentations at CABE, from our school staff, and it, it's just really remarkable. I'm just so proud. Thank you. I second that. Uh, I would like to ask if the board would permit me to take a full break. Sure. 
So I don't know if you guys want to take like a bathroom break or something. Yeah, sure. um, five minutes, maybe. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. So if you would, please, the board, if you will re refresh your screens just so that the voting goes smooth. Otherwise, we'll have to put the Jeopardy music on. Waiting, waiting. All right. <coughs> you guys ready? Yes. All right, so we're on to the action session, item A. I will move that we approve the consent items. Second. Is that you, Sergio? Second by Ms. Ortega. Any questions or comments? Okay, Ms. Bradford. When's the surplus sale going to be? I saw a couple cool items in there. I will get that information for you. <laughs> it's, it goes out to a surplus vendor, oh, okay. and um, they would have to tell us, and they, they participate in different auctions. So I'll have to find out where and when, okay. and, but I will get that back. Okay, back board, board members don't get first pick. <laughs> Just a joke for the record. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Let's call for the vote, please. Motion passes 5 0. Item B. Award RFP number 18-19-13 ES Photography Services. Mrs. Ford. In April, administration solicited proposals for photography services for our elementary and middle schools. Administration received and opened five proposals which were evaluated based on the services and products that were offered, the samples that were provided, and the qualifications and ability for the company to perform value added services. And pricing of the packages, with the pricing uh, being weighted uh, most heavily. Um, the, uh, the proposal from Studio One was deemed to be the most advantageous to the district, and there were principals and our director of elementary education that were involved in uh, evaluating those proposals. Administration recommends the board award the RFP for photography services to Studio One. Thank you. So moved. Motion and, by Mr. Bradford. And, and as an award-winning photographer, they do beautiful stuff. I looked at it. Thank you. Second. Second by Mr. Ortega. Any other questions or comments? Yes. I, do Have we had them before, or are they replacing someone else? We've been um, under contract with Life Touch. Okay. And so they would be replacing the Life Touch for the elementary and the middle schools. The uh, the high schools, we allow them to choose the photography service that they would like to use. Okay. And are the prices for the packages going to remain the same? Are they going to go down or anything yeah. for the families to order packets of their children? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the packages, it, actually that was one of the concerns that the um, elementary schools were having, that the packages were very limited. So the price, the price point we wanted to keep very similar, but we wanted a package that they didn't have to add a lot of add-ons so that the base package would really provide what most families would want. And uh, Studio One does that. Good, that's really good. Thank you. Um, and my other question is, um, does Life Touch c keep their, I, they've told me once before that they kept their um, photos so that if you came back years later and wanted a, a picture of an elementary class or something like that, that they, will they still, um, be obligated to our families to do that. I mean. Life T Touch actually gives us um, all the information on. Uh, actually, I think now they're they're just sending us digitally, okay. so we receive all of that every year and we store it. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, anybody else? All right, let's call for the vote, please.
Motion passes, 5-0. And item C, award bid number 18-19-12 NS, paper products, Mrs. Ford. Administration solicited bids for nutrition services paper products. As the lead agency for the Pomona Valley Co-op Purchasing Group, the co-op consists of 13 member uh, districts that work collaboratively to increase uh, our, all of our district's purchasing power. The district received and opened eight bids. After review, one bidder failed to sign multiple required bid forms. So um, administration recommends that they be deemed non-responsive. Minor ir irregularities were identified in two of the remaining bids. Administration recommends the ir ir irregularities be waived. With input from the co-op, the administration reviewed the pricing and samples provided by the bidders. And it recommends that the board award bids to P&R Paper Supply Company, Individual Food Service, Cisco Riverside Inc., Daxwell, Interboro, Packaging Corporation and Revere Packaging as specified by the line and the lot numbers in your backup documentation. The award is valid from July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020 with the option to extend for, a two, for two one year periods. Across all awarded vendors, the district's estimated annual expenditure is $150,000. Administration recommends the board deem office solutions non-responsive Award the bid for nutrition services paper products to PNR Paper Supply, Individual Food Service, Cisco, Daxwell, Interboro Packaging, and Revere Packaging, and waive any minor irregularities in the submitted bids. Thank you, Mrs. Ford. Ms. Motion second. by Mr. Ortega, second by Mrs. Regal. Any questions or comments? Okay, I'll call for the vote, please. Motion passes, 5-0. Item D, award bid number 18-19-14 MO, Camino Real Elementary School re-roofing. Ms. Griffin. Thank you. On April 8th and 15th, and 15th of 2019, administration solicited bids for a re-roofing project at Camino Real Elementary School. The project consists of a complete re-roofing of all campus buildings, which will significantly reduce water leaks and maintain the warranty of the roof. On April 25th, 2019, administration received and opened two bids. The lowest responsive bid was received by Lettner Roofing Company in the amount of $697,200. The second bid received was from Best Contracting Services Incorporated in the amount of $978,281. This expenditure will be funded through deferred maintenance funds. And at this time, administration recommends the board award the bid for re-roofing of Camino Real Elementary School to Letner Roofing Company in the amount of $697,200. Thank you. Move to approve. Motion by Mrs. Chard. Second. Second by Ms. Ortega. Questions or comments? Okay. When Called. Yes. Sorry. Ms. Regal. When are they gonna start? the project I believe it's scheduled to take place this summer Dana Tolan can answer more to that I'm sorry June 3rd June 3rd okay thank you all right let's call for the vote please Motion passes, 5-0. Item E, award contract for Chromebooks. Mrs. Ford. In 2016, the governing board approved the purchase of approximately 19,000 Chromebooks for the support of the district's digital gateway initiative. The initial Chromebooks purchased have reached the end of their life expectance, uh, expectancy. And the technology department, in consultation with the site technology coordinators and library staff, reviewed several different models and determined that the Dell Chromebook 3100 provided the best overall value. This purchase is for a total of 19,097 Chromebooks for grades K through 12, 
and includes content monitoring software, a three-year warranty with accidental damage coverage, configuration and delivery of the Chromebooks. Pricing is based on the Dell NASPO state piggyback contract, the NCPA piggyback contract, and the CMAS contract. So all of these are piggybackable contracts for us to use. The purchase will be funded through Measure EE funds, and administration recommends the board award a contract for the purchase and configuration and delivery of, of 19,097 Chromebooks to Converge One Inc. in the amount of $7,465,852.14. So moved. Motion by Ms. Ortega. Second. Second by Mrs. Regal. Any questions or comments? What are you going to do with the old Chromebooks? So um, they'll be evaluated. Some of them will be surplus if they're not in, in we don't have the ability to uh, repair them. Uh, others will be repaired and we will keep those on hand. And then some will probably be in pretty good condition because we have a lot out there that are still, although they're, they're not, they won't be um, supported for much longer through Google, through Google. But we may keep those for loaners, especially for the first year coming up. So any student that for whatever reason something happens with their Chromebook, we would have that Chromebook to provide a loaner from the library. And so then you'll send a new request to put them in the surplus for similar to what we're doing tonight? Correct. Okay. Yes. So some will go directly into surplus, but we will keep the best of the Chromebooks to be able to use as loaners to our students. And do you have a target number of what you hope to keep? <sighs> no. I don't think we have. A, no. Yeah, until we start looking at them. But we know, I mean, I know from staff who have students in the district, they say their Chromebooks are in perfect condition. But we have others that, let's just say they were well loved. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> or not. <laughs> um, how, how do we plan on, what's, what's the plan to um, make the changeover? If we purchase them, then are they going to arrive in time for the new school year or the mid school year? And will we just kind of just take the high school ones and then the middle school and then elementary or what? What's the process yeah. to replace or evaluate and or evaluate? I'm going to let, I'm going to let Mr. Lewis. We pay him big bucks. Over. Over. <laughs> right. I'm re really excited well, we about this project. We honor you a lot. You know, we honored you, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, very similar to our textbooks. They're going to come in. I, it would be wonderful if they come in before the school year, but, uh, I'm not going to anticipate that. I'm going to anticipate the worst. Um, but uh, as soon as we can, we're going to get them in. And it's very similar to textbooks. As soon as they come in, they'll go straight to our libraries, and then they will um, call the kids in. And just like they're collecting their textbook, they'll collect their old Chromebooks oh, okay. and then issue them the new ones. So. All right. Okay, good. Thank One you. One more question. So does that mean at the end of the school year they're going to turn in their Chromebooks? No, they're going to hold on to them until they get their new one. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right, any other questions, comments? We All will right. collect we will collect from the seniors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's call for the vote, please. Motion passes, 5-0. Item F, approve new high school course plans. Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you, we have three courses with for you tonight. Advanced GIS Construction Technology 1 and American Sign Language 1. Advanced Geographical Information System is the capstone course for a uh, geographical information system pathway that began this year in Hopa Valley. Construction Technology 1 will be a new pathway at Patriot High School. Um, this is the, the beginning course, and then next year we'll be bringing green construction technology as the capstone course, which will deal more heavily in solar paneling, which is qu it's quite exciting. And then American Sign Language will be um, the first American Sign Language course, and that will be offered at Hoopa Valley. And that will uh, count as a foreign language A through G credit course. So we're very excited with our new offerings. Thank you, Mr. Dabrowski. Motion to approve. Motion by Mrs. Regal. Second. 
second by Mrs. Chard. Any questions or comments? I'm so excited about the American Sign Language, so thank you. And, and Patriot, picking up the construction, I think I might have missed that. I didn't realize it was gonna be at Patriot High School. Where are they gonna put that? TBD. Gotcha. Anything else? No, I think that's great. I, I, I'd heard about that. I talked to Ms. Pace, I think, and uh, I think it's great that we have that program available out there in, in the Patriot area as well. Um, so I haven't seen other questions, so we'll call for the vote, please. Motion passes, 5-0. And our final item, item G, board member committee reports or any additional comments. Mrs. Regal, start with you. Um, I just don't have that much. Um, I did note here to thank you for the American Sign Language, uh, putting that together. But uh, the next couple of weeks are more action packed than I know what to do with. Uh, I'll be attending the senior awards for Harupa Valley High School and Patriot High School this week. Um, Saturday, there's a memorial park, uh, the memorial wall this Saturday. I uh, we'll plan on attending that. And then we'll attend my first graduation as a board member, kind of excited, uh, at Rivercrest. And then also, um, there's on the 21st, the JMS, oh, the AVID screening. Mr. Roten had invited me to attend that he does a screening with his AVID students. So I'm kind of excited to watch that at the Spectrum. Uh, you know, they make their own, it's like their own little movies or something. So I'm really excited to see it. And then of course, uh, Patriot High School on the 28th. That'll be my uh, big graduation, but also excited my daughter's graduating. So it's gonna be an exciting day. That's all I have for you right now. Thank you, Mrs. Regal. Mrs. Chard. Uh, well, I did forget to congratulate our uh, new appointees, and I apologize for that. Um, I, most of them I know, so I know that we made good choices where we put them. Um, this week, we, this month, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but that's my calendar. This is just my board calendar. It doesn't have any of my home things, so we've got a lot of things coming up, a lot of things trying to attend, trying to make, and I apologize if I don't get to some of them. Um, it's just, can't make them all, they, some of them overlap. Um, I'm going to be going to um, the uh, Senior Awards tomorrow night at Herpa Valley, and then on uh, Wednesday night, um, Wednesday I'll be attending a Young Authors Fair at uh, Indian Hills, and then Einar Vocal is having their retirement, so I'm going to that, and then in the afternoon, I'm also attend, in the evening I'm attending um, the uh, Nueva Vista students are receiving awards at a banquet, and so I'm going to that, the outstanding students there. And um, then tomorrow night, we also have our Pam Spring Concert, which I'm going to have to miss, but um, hopefully one of you guys might be able to make that one. Um, then Thursday night is uh, Rubido's Awards and Patriot's Awards, so we're splitting. She's going to Patriot, I'm going to Rubido Awards. <laughs> um, and then, um, Saturday is also the um, the Veterans Wall, which I'll be attending because my father and grandfather and uncle are all on that wall. And then also the um, Food Services is having their nutrition um, uh, luncheon at Sunny Slope in the afternoon, and I've not been to that, so I'm gonna try and make that. Um, last week was uh, Teacher Week, and um, we uh, you know made comments and appreciated our teachers. And then next week will be our classified employee week, so we're gonna wish them all the best also. And then uh, graduation week starts the next week, so um, I'll report back on some of those after that. Um, I know that we won't see you guys, some of you before, so please have a enjoyable Memorial Day and we'll see you at the next board meeting, if not at these activities. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Um, Oh, I attended the mayor's breakfast and um, prayer breakfast and it's on prayer day. And that was really nice. It, um, all the community comes together and we do have some of our students, Rubido's um, uh, acapella choir or mag medicals performed. Um, and there were some great speeches by several 
um, distinguished guests in the community. And it's always nice to go and hear how everybody wants to help make the country, as well as our communities, work together. And uh, it's, just, it's just a very nice one if you can go to it. It's, it's a nice thing to go to. Other than that, I think I will um, close my mouth for a while <laughs> and let you talk. Thank you, Mrs. Chard. Mrs. Bradford. I'm envious at hearing all the wonderful things that have happened in the last couple of weeks. I was in Wyoming uh, with my brother's surgery and I saw snow fall for the first time. It was incredibly exciting uh, as a native Southern Californian. Um, in reflection, this has been a really fine year. I often say that sometimes coming to board meetings scares me a lot because I don't know what's going to happen and how, how, do, I, uh, how do I respond to the emotions of, of everyone who wants the best. And, and um, I realize that I am one-fifth of the guardianship of people's most precious commodity, their children. So to everybody on the board and to the cabinet and, and everybody out in the audience and, and deputy, I always feel better when, when I see law enforcement standing at the back. I, I feel safe from the back door. And, and Scotty, thank you. Mr. Bradford, thank you for driving me. This has been a marvelous year and I really appreciate the uh, district sponsoring me in masters in government because that really impressed upon me the incredible seriousness of what we all engage in every day. So thank you, thank you for your help, thank you for everything that you do. And most of all, this is a really cool board and I enjoy your thoughtful comments and, and the deliberations that uh, we make both in public and private session, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. Ms. Ortega. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to um, piggyback what uh, Superintendent Deshaun was to, uh, say, uh, commenting about the Gabe Regional Conference. Um, you know, I had signed up uh, really not knowing what it was about, and I was just really impressed that, you know, we had a big representation of our district there. Um, there was a few superintendents that went up there in, in, in the beginning and kind of introduced um, themselves and what, how important, you know, education in general is and how, you know, uh, bilingual education is, is not only just that, it's about, uh, you know, integrating cult different cultures and different uh, beliefs into, into education. I think it was really nice to see just a very diverse group of, of leaders up in in, um, in in that conference, starting off the conference. It was just a beautiful experience. So um, I thank our superintendent for making the time to 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 represent as well in that aspect too. Um, and uh, for for this month, I think uh, you know we've seen a lot of awareness on mental health. Um, again, I work for for Loma Melinda and th their behavioral um, their behavioral center is just overwhelmed with the increasing amounts of what we don't know is it's to be increasing in an epidemic of of children. We we sat down with uh, Murrieta, um Murrieta Loma Melinda. There's a children's hospital there too, and and I was just very proud that we're getting to the point where public health and public education need to marry each other for us to really create solutions for these for these students and also our, our teachers who who you know also may be bur over overburdened with with personal life we can't we can't dismiss that um, so we I, I was very empowered to sit down with with them with their leadership in creating um, even a stronger unity from their school districts. So Hemet, Murrieta, all those school districts out there are creating, um, you know, stronger, stronger uh, partnerships with with that because we do get it that it's 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 a great need for for our students and mental health, and most especially um, this month that we're creating even more awareness. Um, and uh, Sunday it'll be a, a run there, so a 5K uh, in Loma Linda, and I'll be I'll be doing that. 
Um, and also this week, this past week was Teachers Appreciation um, Week. So we appreciate every single educator that is, you know, willing to to take that hat and and wear multiple hats. I think too. I always say that it's it's not a one, just a one hat show. It's a it's a multiple hat show. So we appreciate all the teachers out there. Um, and then we thank the students and every. Uh, for the yearbooks, this is my first year where I, I want to really uh, take some time and really um, devote um, some time and really looking at what the students and their teams are, are being able to uh, create because it takes publishing, it takes reading and writing to create these yearbooks. So I want to really uh, take some time and, and, um, and, and do that and appreciate our students and their teams for doing that. And um, next week we'll be in Sacramento. Um, we got invited to um, also, we wear different hats as well and it, it's really important for um, us to advocate for I think what's right and there's a lack of funding in our in our schools and it needs to, you know, our, 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 uh, our other uh, uh, government um, uh, leaders need to hear from from us that we are struggling and that there is a greater need for full and fair funding. Um, so we'll be out in Sacramento next week. Um, and I know um, President Garcia is also going to be out there, and you know, just really advocating. And and we are the voice and and um, in uh, the voice for students and for our local community. So uh, we'll be representing that, and then. Um, I think that's that's it, and then we just get to go home right now and wear another hat. I'm also a student, so I get to do homework. My my, my homeworks are due on Monday, so <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just really privileged and honored again to to be of service to my community and to my district that I grew up here. So, and it is an honor to sit um, in this dais with with leaders who really genuinely care for our students. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Uh, just a couple things myself. Um, all the projects going on. Thank you, Robin, Dana, Trent, <coughs> and the whole team. You know, I get a lot of positive comments. I know the signs went up in Glen Avon, so a lot of people are excited about that. So I know they've been waiting on that. We had some challenges there. Um, so a lot of great work going on throughout the district, a uh, bunch of projects, and uh, thank you guys for that. Uh, congratulations to Shelby, Melissa's daughter, Mrs. Regal's daughter, and so I know. Um, I think she's going to UCI. So um, look forward, I'm gonna be at the graduation with Mrs. Regal there, so I'm looking forward to that. And as Ms. Ortega mentioned, I'll be up in Sacramento. I'll be there on Saturday and Sunday for a delegate assembly meeting. So to kind of uh, advocate for not just special ed funding, but you know, in general, um, we need more funding for a lot of the programs, especially a lot of unmanned, uh, un unfunded mandated programs. So I'm looking forward to that and a lot of other various activities, um, graduations, award ceremonies, and I'll try to do as much as I can. And, and finally, I just wanted to kind of, kind of reiterate what my teammates have set up here as far as us being a good team. Uh, we all keep our eye on the ball that it is for our students. So we, we serve uh, with that unity of purpose. And I think um, when Wendy and Paul came up and spoke, especially when Wendy spoke, she, she mentioned that uh, she doesn't remember in her 14 years or whatever it was, maybe it was 30 years, but that um, we're board members, all, board, all five board members have visited representative council and, and I think it just goes to show that, that uh, we're a great team here. We're willing to, to be transparent and to collaborate and, Make sure we do what's right for our students. And that's all I have. Mr. Deshaun, any final comments? Yeah, I have several pages, um, actually. <laughs> um, you have a three minute time limit, sir. Yeah, okay. okay, I can do this in three minutes. First of all, I really do want to thank all of the board members, each and all of you, for going through Masters in Governance. I think that's a major commitment, and it, it shows in how you conduct yourself as a board, and it's a great <coughs> message to the community. I, I also want to call out um, Josh Lewis for a minute. It's just like this one little agenda item, E, and it's um, $7 million in Chromebooks. And I, I think it's pretty amazing, and if you recall the first time we did this, 
um, a lot of teachers were saying, what are we going to do with them? We don't know what to do with them. And in, in a way, we said, just use them. And they did. And now, if you go into kindergarten classes, you'll see students uploading Google Docs and all kinds of amazing things. And, and it's happened on the surface relatively seamlessly. Very few complaints or problems. And I just want to thank Mr. Lewis for a seamless program rolling out 19,000 devices to 19,000 students from kindergarten through 12th grade is pretty amazing and teachers who weren't quite sure what was going to happen when they came into their classrooms with them and it's just provided great training, great use and of course we don't always get the message to everyone but we hope families use them. I also, uh, she's nearing her last couple official board meetings, not as CSEA president. Um, she's um, retired from that role and she'll retire from the district. But Diana Strona, I think, has sat through every single board member board meeting that I have to the end. She's read more agendas than I have to the word and really has cared deeply for the other half of our educators in the district, the classified employees, and and stood up for them when they needed representing, spoke in their voice when, um, when they needed to be spoken about, for, or praised. And she's been succeeded by John Wilson. You have very big shoes to fill. Um, but I just want to thank Diana for working cooperatively and collaboratively. And it's, it's been an honor to serve with you. So thank you. All right, well, thank you everyone for coming and our meeting is adjourned.